Welcome back, everybody, to another week of Sunday School here at the Lighthouse Church of the Nazarene in Moravia, Iowa, where we're going through the book of Job. This week, we are in Job chapter 20. Now, the main question in the book of Job is, why do righteous people suffer? Why do good things happen to bad people? The problem is, that question never really does get answered in the book of Job. But the book of Job does tell us that God sees everything going on in our lives and that God is in control of everything. And we can take comfort in that, can we not? So today in Job chapter 20, we're going to hear from one of Job's friends named Zophar. Remember, we had Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. We're going to hear from Zophar, but he isn't going to say anything new to us. He's just going to say the same thing that the other friends have already been saying. Now, this third friend, Zophar, he is only going to speak twice, and we last heard from him in chapter 11. The other two friends, Eliphaz and Bildad, they each speak three times. So, we're going to hear from the second time from Zophar. It's the last time we're going to hear from him. So, let's get out our Bibles, and let's follow along. Uh, Job chapter 20, verse 1. Then so Zophar the Namathite answered and said, Therefore my anxious thoughts make me answer because of the turmoil within me. So Zophar has to have a quick response. So what are we hearing here? We're hearing quick superficial thoughts, and these are not the words of God. Uh, we would be wise. Remember the words of James. James 1.19 says that we should be swift to hear and slow to speak. Um, Ecclesiastes 5.2 says, do not be quick to speak. We don't need to fire off quick, rapid-fire answers and think on our feet. Most of the time, those aren't good words to say. So, verse 3. I have heard the rebuke that reproaches me, and the spirit of my understanding causes me to answer. Um, does Job, it seems like Zophar almost feels insulted by Job. Why would Zophar feel insulted by Job? Well, Maybe he's insulted because he feels like Job is blaming God and not himself. Or it could be at the end of the last chapter, when Job spoke there in chapter 19, um, Job gave them all a warning that you too are all going to stand in judgment. So maybe Zophar was insulted by that and was like, are you really lecturing me, Mr. Sitting There in an Ash Heap and obviously condemned by God? So Zophar obviously seems insulted by Job. Let's keep going here. Verse 4. Do you not know this of old, since man was placed on earth? Just You can just feel the pride and arrogance in Zophar. He's saying, everybody knows this, Job. Job um, this is almost a claim of authority, is it not? He says, I know this is true, but you don't. So we can just feel the pride and arrogance coming out of this man. Verse 5, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite is but for a moment. Now, is this true what Zophar is saying here? In one way, it is. I mean, in one way, in light of eternity, life is short. So any gain that we have here on this earth is but for a moment, but for a short time. But Zophar is saying that the triumphing of the wicked is short, saying that the wicked, what they succeed in, will be shorter than what the righteous person succeeds in. Is this true or is it not? Let's think about this. God is actually long-suffering with the wicked, is he not? 2 Peter 3, 8, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. Now, God actually has very much patience with the wicked, and that's through his mercy. Remember, God waited a hundred years before he after warning of the flood, before he sent the flood. And the Canaanites, um, he gave them 400 years in the land of Canaan. He told Abraham that, he said, uh, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not complete. And he gave them 400 years to repent, and they still didn't do it. So um, it's actually interesting. The prophet Jeremiah, he actually came at this from a different angle. And it's in Jeremiah 12.1, where he says, Why do the wicked enjoy such long life? And why do the wicked enjoy such freedom from trouble? So Jeremiah didn't say that the triumph of the wicked is short. He's saying, God, why do you, why do you grant them so much mercy? Let's keep going here. Verse 6. Though his haughtiness mounts up to the heavens and his head reaches to the clouds. It's interesting. Remember last week, just in chapter 19, we talked about all the different idioms that come from the Bible. Remember, um, getting by by the skin of your teeth, the root of the matter, the handwriting on the wall, driving like a yahoo, all these idioms that come out of the Bible. We have another one right here in verse 6. Have you ever heard of somebody who has their head in the clouds? That comes right out of the Bible, and it comes right here. What's, uh, what's so far talking about here? He's talking about pride. 
And remember, pride is one of the seven deadly sins that they talk as tell us in the Bible. It's Proverbs chapter six. Six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. Do you know what the first one is? A proud look. Uh, what did Jesus say about this? He said, he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. Um, yeah, so the interesting thing is here, who actually is the one that has his head in the clouds? Who actually is the one with the pride issue? It's Zophar, is it not? Let's keep going here. Verse 7, yet he will perish forever like his own refuse. I mean, like his own dung, it'll be gone. How do you like Zophar's words there? Those who have seen him will say, where is he? Verse 8, he will fly away like a dream and not be found. Yes, he will be chased away like a vision in the night. The eye that saw him will see him no more, nor will his place behold him anymore. Uh, this reminds us of what James tells us. Again, it, it, James 1, 9, where he says, Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation. For as a flower of the field, he will fall away. For no sooner has the morning sun risen with the burning heat than its flower falls and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man will fade away in his pursuit. That's what Zophar is saying here. He's saying, just as the rich man will fade away in his pursuit, Job, so will the wicked man. You should repent right now is basically what he's saying to him. Verse 10. And remember, Zophar is still making reference to wicked people here. Verse 10. His children will seek the favor of the poor and his hand will restore his wealth. His bones are full of his youthful vigor, but it will lie down with him in the dust. Now, what Zophar is saying here is basically true. We're all going to die. Hebrews 9, 27 says it is appointed to man once to die and after this the judgment. But we have to remember this. There are no ironclad rules which dictate when a righteous man will die or when a wicked man will die. There are godless people who live to old ages and there are righteous people who die young. There is no ironclad rule and we can't read into any of that. Uh, where are we at here? Verse 12. Though evil is sweet in his mouth, and he hides it under his tongue, though he spares it and does not forsake it, but still keeps it in his mouth, verse 14, yet his food in his stomach turns sour, and it becomes cobra venom within him. What, what Zophar is saying here is that it may be sweet at first, all this unrighteous gain that you get, Job, but it'll turn bitter. And the Bible actually tells us that, does it not? The Bible tells us that the pleasures of sin are only for a moment. You know, sin is pleasurable for a season. It tells us that in Hebrews 11, 25. But remember that it also says, be sure your sin will find you out. So that kind of brings up the question, can a Christian sin and not feel guilty? I'd be concerned if you could sin and have no remorse over it, not have the Holy Spirit checking you, telling you that, hey, that's wrong. Verse 15, still Zophar talking about the wicked. He swallows down riches and vomits them up again. God casts them out of his belly. He's saying, you, know, you'll, you won't be able to hold any of the wealth in your hand. It'll go through your fingers. Verse 16, he will suck the poison of cobras. The viper's tongue will slay him. Verse 17, he will not see the streams, the rivers flowing with honey and cream. Isn't it interesting? Honey and cream, milk and honey, um, they represent the highest enjoyment of earthly prosperity and happiness in the Bible. Whenever something's great, it's always flowing with milk and honey. Verse 18, he will restore that for which he has labored. He will not swallow it down. From the proceeds of business, he will get no enjoyment. Um, this reminds us of what Solomon said. It's in Ecclesiastes 5.12. He says, the sleep of a laboring man is sweet, but the abundance of the rich man will not permit him to sleep. That's what Zophar is saying right here. You know, from the proceeds of your business, you'll get no enjoyment, Job. Verse 19, for he has oppressed and forsaken the poor, and he has violently seized a house which he did not build. Now Zophar is actually accusing Job of acquiring earthly wealth by dishonest gains. How does he have any clue? He's entirely reading into the situation here. One thing we have to remember, these are the words of Zophar. And at the end of the book of Job, remember, God condemns the three friends and says, what you said was not right. Now, am I saying everything they said is wrong? No, but it's applied entirely wrong in this situation to Job because we know Job was a righteous man. Verse 20, because he knows no quietness in his heart, he will not save anything he desires. Nothing is left for him to eat. Therefore, his well-being will not last. Notice there in verse 20, he says, because he knows no quietness in, in his heart. What does Jesus give us? 
Jesus gives us peace. Without, without God, there is no peace. And people just live lives ridden with anxiety. But Jesus told us, it's in John 16, 33. He says, I tell you these things beforehand so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Isaiah 26, 3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is focused on you because he trusts in you. That is the gift of God, that no matter what life throws at us, no matter what the trials of this life bring, we can have peace because we know that our names are written in the book of life and that we will spend all of eternity with him. And anything in this life is but for a moment. Where are we at here? Verse 22, in his self-sufficiency, he will be in distress. Every hand of misery will come against him. Is self-sufficiency a sin? Absolutely it is. If our self-sufficiency becomes independence from God, then yeah, self-sufficiency is a sin. Saying, hey, I got this. I don't need anything. Remember the words of Jesus. Without me, you can do nothing. And we would be wise to remember that. Verse 23. When he is about to fill his stomach, God will cast on him the fury of his wrath and will rain on him while he is eating. He will flee from the iron weapon. A bronze bow will pierce him through. It is drawn and comes out of the body. Yes, the glittering point comes out of his gall. Terror comes upon him. Total darkness is reserved for his treasures. An unfanned fire will consume him. This is a picture of Hades right here in the Old Testament. Jesus says you know, they'll be cast out into outer darkness where there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. He says that well, there will be an unconsumable fire. It's right here in the Old Testament. It shall go ill with him who is left in his tent. Verse 27. The heavens will reveal his iniquity and the earth will rise up against him. The increase of his house will depart and his goods will flow away in the day of his wrath. Remember, Job was one of the most wealthiest men in the east. He was the greatest man in the east. And what is Zophar saying? Oh, the wicked man, all his goods, they'll all be gone. Job's goods are all gone. Verse 29. This is the portion from God for a wicked man, the heritage appointed to him by God. And then we're done hearing from Zophar for the rest of the book. Notice Zophar's message here. There's no pity. There's no love. There's no understanding. Only condemnation. Well, next week we get one chapter of Job and then we're going to hear from Eliphaz back in chapter 22. So next week we hear from Job. We're done from this week hearing from Zophar. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you the same time, same place next week. Bye.